place was, always will be. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather today and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend that request, uh, respect to our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, today on our Academy News, we stand before you as the public affairs representatives of a broken Armenian Australian community. An integral piece of our Armenian motherland, from where our ancestors derived, is under occupation after the Russian Federation broke a deal as treacherous as the one forced upon Armenians by Stalin during the days of the Soviet Union. Armenia and Azerbaijan have signed a ceasefire that would take the majority of our stuff away from its indigenous owners, force Armenians to leave their homes they inhabited for thousands of years, and allow the construction of a pan turkic highway connecting Azerbaijan with fellow genocidal and metaphobic dictatorship Turkey through sovereign Armenian borders. Since the Dharapath liberation movement of the 80s and 90s, there have been many deals proposed by world powers. Some have been entertained, even agreed to, by different Armenian administrations over the past three decades. But they have all been rejected by the Armenian people. This deal takes the worst components from every so-called compromise proposed and packages it up with the unacceptable presence on Armenia's doorstep of forces from the Republic of Turkey who continues to commit their predecessors' genocide against Armenians by denying the crime. Making it even harder to swallow is the fact that this agreement was forced on Armenia and Azza after 44 days of war crimes by Azerbaijan, Turkey, and Islamist jihadic terrorists deployed from the Middle East. War crimes that included the use of illegal cluster bombs, chemical warfare in the form of white phosphorus munitions dropped on Azov's pristine forests where people lay refuge. Attacks on hospitals, schools, churches, and even civilian homes. Beheadings of Armenian prisoners of war. Open threats by Turkey and Azerbaijan and ethnic cleansing. They literally said a ceasefire can only be achieved if Armenians leave their homes in the Golden Valley. As these war crimes were ongoing, as the Armenian homeland was being torn apart, the international community remained silent. Australia continues its silence. This international looking the other way has resulted in the ethnic cleansing of Armenians from the Armenian homeland, 105 years on from the Armenian genocide. On the screens above, you'll see carloads of Armenian refugees being forced to flee their millennia inhabited homes because of the treacherous agreement that has resulted from these attacks. Russia is to blame. Azerbaijan is to blame. Turkey is to blame. Armenian leaders will be judged by their citizens. But make no mistake, this deal is co signed by all those countries who watched on as this resumption of genocide took place. Our message to the Australian government your signature might be an invisible ink, but it is not invisible to Armenian Australians. You ignored the pleas of your own citizens to call out and condemn such military aggression. 
blinded by your diplomatic aspirations with bad actors. He swallowed hook, line, and sinker. The propaganda and threats of two foreign dictatorships and granted false equivalence to the roles being played by the aggressors and the victims. He took half the blame from Aliyev and his friends and placed them on the shoulders of indigenous Armenians being indiscriminately bombed, thereby enabling the butchers of the Caucasus to continue what they began in 1950. We appreciate all of those, some in this room, who have spoken out about this despite the government's culpable silence, despite the media's simplistic false supplements. We plead with you to continue doing the same, but with renewed vigor. As we begin our journey to pour ice on a deal we do not accept. Let me be clear. Your Armenian Australian constituents reject this deal. This is a deal that ignores the fundamental human rights to self-determination. The, the, the democratic and legal expression of these rights were expressed by these people in 1991 and as far as we're concerned in 1990. This deal is one forced on our people under unacceptable duress. And once again, for those in the back, we refuse this deal. If anybody thinks we're here to cry and mourn, please reconsider. There is no time for that we have an ancestral motherland to save. Heroes for honor, people to care for and return safely to their homes. And we will remember those who stand by us in this time of need. Our community has been broken for six weeks. This experience has united us like never before and affirmed the following. As a diaspora created because of genocide that took the homes of our ancestors, our support for you will be ushered by your action against this occupation of the Armenian Republic of Iraq. We will campaign and vote for only those who honor the self-determination and recognition of the Republic of Iraq. For six weeks we haven't slept. Budgets, interest rates, jobs plans, even COVID have not played a part in our thinking. This will all continue to be secondary until Azerbaijan's occupation of our motherland ends. We call on our friends. We need your advocacy more than ever. And this is what we pledge to demand from you on behalf of our community. Now to our beloved community. Do not be discouraged. Do not bottle your frustrations, your anger, your grief and your sorrows and throw that bottle away in the ocean. That would mean surrender. Swallow your frustrations, your anger, your grief and your sorrows, and let these emotions make you roar. Roar louder than ever before. Roar that you resist surrender. That you stand with our son. That you stand with our media now and forever. The idea of uniting around defeat is marketing talk for surrender. It is a line being peddled to us by the same foreign powers who sold our country to oil and dictatorships. 15,000. 15,000 Armenians have died or recognized Aksak since 1988. We have no authority to surrender their sacrifice because we are being threatened that no surrender would mean more bloodshed. Do not allow these bullying forces to silence the most important element that has ensured our survival. That element, of course, is Baikal. Baikal loosely translates to struggle. But there is no real English language equivalent for this word as it is exclusive to the Armenian experience. Without Baikal, we would not have survived the Armenian genocide. Without Baikal, we would not have had a Sardarabad. Without Baikal, 
we would not have an independent Armenia today. Tonight, let's recalibrate to Baker. Let's recommit to Baker. Let's redouble our Baker. Let's unite only in Baker. Only Baker will deliver recognized answer. And Baker, for the long haul, is what we pledge to you as your Armenian National Committee in Australia.